I'm yep. JQ. I'm TQ. We are the Q Brothers, and we have special guests, Andy, Andy Tower. Tower. Um, Andy is a perfumer and an artist from Switzerland who's flown all the way here to be on videos with us, comes come to our Super store, meet cool. people, and, uh, and really someone that I, I'm so excited to meet you because when we decided to expand the fragrance section in Q Brothers and really open up and, and kind of create a niche independent fragrance uh, section in our business, uh, a true section, uh, you were sort of the, your brand well, was this the first was a prime one. I re example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's okay. one of the first I requested, and I just I'm a huge fan, and so it's really an honor to meet you and have you here. And it's an honor for me, you know, because three or four years ago I was here visiting your Merce apothecary. Yeah. And when I visited, I said to myself, I want to be in there with. That's the so cool. <laughs> <laughs> that is really cool. So, yeah. wow. I'm, I'm the one who feels honored. That's great. Um, I, I welcome and uh, thank you for coming here. I'm My pleasure. Chicago. My pleasure. It's a great city, by the way. Yeah, thank it's you. Really Thanks. Great Thanks. City. Thanks. So give us a little, give us a little brief history. How you guys started? Yeah. How do okay. you, I know this wasn't. Yeah. Well. A brief history, like yeah. five minutes? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll ask questions well, along the okay. way. Okay, okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. like 15 years ago, I was a manager, okay? Yeah. I was managing research projects, uh, European research projects. It was a little bit of a boring job, and I was not really into perfumes back then. I was wearing perfumes, some niche, uh, some standard yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. designer brands. And I bought a book by Mandy Ofdel, which is who is a West Coast all natural perfume guru. Mm -hmm. okay? She's really a lovely lady and she wrote a book called Essence and Alchemy and everybody interested in natural perfumes and raw materials, I really recommend this book. But it's a dangerous book because it can really hook you up. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened. That's, That's what happened to you, happened. Huh? Exactly. I read the book and then I really became a collector of raw materials, roses, jasmine, all the good stuff. And I started playing with raw materials and made the first perfumes. For friends and family, mm -hmm. most of them were not really that good. <laughs> um, but you know, I was really hooked up, and basically every day, I after work, I came back home and and I played and tried to yeah, yeah, come yeah. up with new tricks. And when, how long did it take before you thought, "Wow, this is something I could actually sell"? Well. Well, you see, I lost this great management job, okay? Mm -hmm. And then I was unemployed for, well, over a year. Mm -hmm. um, it was a bad time back then. And then I have a good friend who has a bookstore, a little tiny bookstore mm -hmm. where he sells, besides books, also uh, craftsmanship from Morocco. And he was actually asking me uh, whether I could make a perfume around Morocco that would fit his shop, huh. you know, that he could sell. Cool. So and I, I had lots of time and I said, okay, yeah, let's do it. And I made my first perfume that ended up on a shelf in a bookstore, which was called Le Maroc pour elle, okay? And I made something like 50 bottles mm -hmm. and I did not sell. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you're more determined than ever. <laughs> you know, the problem is you have a no-name perfumer in a bookstore uh, and the bottle was really super ugly. It was a really cheap bottle. <laughs> and, and, and so uh, after a couple of months, Pascal, the, uh, the shop owner and me, we had a crisis meeting, you know, mm. what should we do? <laughs> and, and we decided, okay, maybe one is not enough. We need a collection, at least two, you know? And I made the second one mm. around the theme, the idea of Morocco, which was, uh, where is it here? L'air du désert Moroccan. Uh, that's, your, that's your second. <laughs> that's, that, my that's why I have the O2 on it, huh? And uh, still today, it's the best selling. I was going to say. And, uh, it's amazing. Cool. And it's, it, it, it your started. second fragrance ever is a classic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's That's true. awesome. That <laughs> is awesome. It, it, it really was awesome. And, and you know, um, what was great about it is uh, back then there was Luca Turin having his own blog, mm -hmm. a perfume critic. Yep. And I was so desperate. I sent him samples of Eddie Desert Marca, and he was so excited about it. He wrote for a couple of magazines yeah, and journals. Yeah, cool. and then everything started, you know. Yeah. And what year was that? That's like 11 years ago. Okay. Yeah. 2005. Gee, that's a long time ago, huh? Yeah. But I was clueless, you know, I was clueless about the market mm. and uh, about 
production. And was, I, it, was that an advantage to you? Like almost like, you know, if you had known how the, you know, manufacturing goes and the headaches that go into it in the market. Would you have done it? No, no way, <laughs> no way. So it's true. Uh, so it's <laughs> almost a blessing that you didn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's like, Are it's like, it's like getting pregnant. If you know what's gonna come up, <laughs> with how it will change. No one would get, like, you won't, you won't get pregnant, probably. Uh, I'm about so, to have a baby in four weeks. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so no, but on a, on the other hand, it really helps being naive sometimes yeah. because you do things your way, and mm -hmm. suddenly you realize, hey, nobody has done this before. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like for instance, ten years, no, eleven years ago, I started my blog on TowerPerfumes.com. Since then, uh, I'm writing the blog. And back then I was the first one, first perfumer, first brand, micro brand, to uh, talk about how it is to create a perfume, to build a brand. The backstory, yeah. Right, right, right. Cool, that's cool. Yeah. And it actually, this blog, it also was kind of connecting me to the perfume community. I was going to say, that, that had to be part of your success in getting the line out there. All of a sudden, yeah. all these people who are into it, and, and there is a huge perfume enthusiast community and so yeah. now all of a sudden they have access to a perfumer directly whereas so, yeah right yeah. i mean and, yeah. and and like i think you know in the way that um remember like movies you used to just go see a movie you didn't know anything about it and then dvds came out and all the all the extras yeah. and the yeah. you know and you would watch the making of and the commentary you know and that was always like you there was so much more to dive into and sink your teeth into and then you became a bigger fan of movies movies because of it and that's kind of similar what happens with oh absolutely you know? and, and you know I, I don't only share the success stories I also share the troubles yeah. I have you yeah. know there was in the US for instance the financial crisis maybe yeah. you remember we we're still sure. suffering yeah. and back then you know it was really like a hard time because yeah. back then yeah. the US was my biggest market imagine yeah and, and from one day to the other it was like wow what happened uh, and, but people like these kind of stories you know that it's not always going up uh, yeah, and no. And you want to be real. real. Yeah, 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 yeah. So people like that. And back then, when I started, like, you know, that was kind of pre Facebook area. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. hard to imagine. I know. But, but mm -hmm. uh, it was one of the only ways to really out, reach out to the client. And, yeah. and I, I still do it. I still talk about That's it. And cool. when I'm back in Switzerland, I will talk about my visit to uh, the Cuba. Cool. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah. What, is, nice. what is your one question? Uh, what, what is your, um, like, what what is your out, like, your angle when you're making perfumes that kind of you think makes yours i mean because we find it to be super unique and yeah, i wonder yeah. if that's yeah do you you have a something you're able to sum up or is it just sort of it is what it is and you're you you know mm, well there are a couple of things which make the brand or andy tower which is basically the brand special one thing is if you look in to the industry, mm -hmm. uh, I'm one of the very few brands who's really independent mm -hmm. and free. So there's no bank money in my mm -hmm. brand. It's all self-financed. I'm still the nose, the producer, the shipper, the I do actually do everything except the bookkeeping. This <laughs> is, uh, and, and, so I have a lot of freedom, you know. I can make a perfume, I can come up with a perfume where I know this is not going to sell well or where I think it's not going to sell well, but I can do it because I can work in small quantities and it's my money and, and you know I just there's do some it. small market out there that's going to There is always a small market yeah. for, uh, and you know, in, a, in brackets, if you try to make a fragrance that everybody loves, that, that is going to be a big hit, then you end up with Chanel Bleu, okay? <laughs> yeah. Which is interesting, but not my way of doing things. Yeah, so yeah, I think yeah. it, this independence is, is one, one reason. Cool. Uh, the other reason is that it's like handwriting, you know, I have my style. Um, yeah, yeah. It's just unique just, to you. It just happens. You have your nose and yeah. your preferences yeah. and your taste. I have my preferences. Maybe I have mm, my sense of smell works in a certain way. Mm -hmm. I have certain things that I like. I have certain ways to combine uh, fragrance ingredients. That's, that's yeah. how it works. No, I think. It's